Hello, Brigadiers and Brigadettes and hockey fans alike. This is your captain speaking. Welcome to my channel. Now let's jump into some hockey content. Hello, everybody. Happy Saturday. We're going to be talking about whether or not the Florida Panthers hot start is too good to be true. Before we start, yes, I thought that this would be kind of funny to do. I don't really wear tank tops. And I really don't wear this one, but it goes along with the theme. And yes, I realize I look like a tool, but that's all right. We're just having some fun with this video. So with that being said, please make sure to subscribe if you have not. And now we're on with the video. So the Florida Panthers are off to a great start as they are 11-2-2 on the year and lead the league in win percentage. Is it sustainable or will they collapse like they have in previous seasons? For starters, they'll likely slow down regardless. Um... I'm not sure whether or not they'll make the playoffs, but if they continue to play this way, they'll finish the season with 41 wins if they continued on this pace in 56 games, which is not likely or sustainable, very, very unlikely. And that would actually be more than they had last year, and I think like 70 games, so I don't believe that that'll happen. However, let's take a look at what they're doing well, and before we get into some of that stuff, or before we get into some of the bad stuff, we'll talk about what they do well. The most obvious thing is that they score a ton of goals. Right now, they're fourth in the league at 3.51 goals per game. Very good. I do think that could drop, but not by a lot. Last year, they averaged 3.35 goals per game, which I believe was sixth last season. So, I don't think that the drop will be super steep. I think they do have the guys to keep the offense at least top 10. The two main guys on the team, Alexander Barkov and Jonathan Huberdeau, obviously are leading the way. They have combined for 13 goals and 27 assists so far on the season. They've been, you know, putting the weight of the team on their back and they've continued to play well. What I really love to see is other guys stepping up as right now Petra Kornquist, Carter Verhage, Anthony DeCoyer, they're all looking like good additions. These acquisitions are smart moves and they don't break the bank as these three players combine for $8 million. Now, Petra Kornquist, his deal's a little bit bigger, but if he keeps playing this way, then I think it won't be something that you look at that contract and say, wow, that's really, you know, just... Uh, not a good deal. I think right now he's playing very well. Now, I know that Anthony Duclair will probably get more money or leave with uh, Florida just because I think he's on a one-year deal, and that will probably be an issue by the end of the season, but let's focus on right now. Another thing that the Panthers do really well is a close, close games. There are seven and two in close games where it's, you know, a one-goal game where they win 4-3 or 3-2, something like that. They're seven and two, so they do know how to close out the close games so far. And honestly, that seems different compared to the past few years. It normally felt like Florida, I'm not going to say I watched a ton of Florida games, but it felt like whenever I did, they would have a lead, and then in some heartbreaking way, they would lose the game. And it always seemed like it was two goals that they would give up towards the end. Another thing they do really well is that they score on the power play. Florida's power play percentage is 30.2% on the year, and it sixth, sits sixth in the league, just behind Buffalo. The only bad thing for the Panthers is that they have the 29th fewest power play time on ice per game. So what does that exactly mean? It just means that basically they're getting a decent chunk of their offense from the power play, but they're not really getting a lot of time on the power play, and they score at a high rate when they are on the power play. Is it concerning that 30% of their offense is coming from the power play? That's a mixed bag answer, but I think yes. It is a weird season, so maybe they could continue this way, but... Florida keeping up this pace might be a little concerning. Last year, their power play uh, was 19% of their goals, and they were 12th best in the league, and they had the 13th most power play time on ice per game compared to 29th this past season, or this season. I'm not saying that they can't keep it up, but as you can see, that last year when they were 12th in the league for power play percentage, they were getting a lot of opportunities to go in the power play, whereas right now they haven't. So... I don't know if you want to say that it's a good thing they rely on a big chunk of their offense to come from that power play when they're not really getting a lot of opportunities. The only solution to that would be drawing more penalties, which isn't completely out of question. Guys like Barkov, Huberto, and Hornquist are decent at drawing penalties. I believe all three of them were in the talks, top 60 of players that drew penalties last year. Now let's focus what they're not good at. And you know, it's not truly awful. They're not really awful at anything, but if we had to point the finger... I think the difference between Chris Drieger and Nick compared to Sergei Bobrovsky is noticeable. But we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about that than just saying, oh, Sergei Bobrovsky is bad. When Chris is in net, the team gives up 2.63 goals per game. And when Sergei is in net, they give up 3.43 goals per game. As you can see, that is a major difference, but let's talk about it a little more. 
Panthers have a legitimately good defensive team this year, believe it or not. They've given up the third fewest scoring chances against per 60 and the fewest, yes, the fewest high danger chances against in the entire league. However, the results have been a little different for both goalies as Chris is having a good season while Sergei is not. Chris's stats look like this on the year, 6-1-1, 2.34 goals against average, and a 9.26 save percentage with zero shutouts. And then Sergei's stats look like this, the win percentage is obviously going to be better. His record is 5-1-1, the goals against average is 3.33, and then the save percentage is 8.84, which is obviously not great with zero shutouts. Why is his win percentage so high? Basically because they're scoring a bunch of goals. One thing I will say in Sergei's defense is that besides the two games he gave up six goals, he hasn't really been awful. He's not been great, but he's, you know, been keeping them in the games because they score so many goals. They really just need him to give up around three goals per game, and they'd really be in great shape. For some reason, though, I will say this. When Bob plays, they give up more scoring chances against and more high danger chances, and part of that can be attributed to the fact that they spend more time on the penalty kill than when Chris Drieger is in it. So they really just got to figure out you know, a way to reduce the amount of time they're, they're on the penalty kill when Bob plays. His high danger save percentage isn't very good. He's been giving up a fair chunk of goals. And now I know one of those games was against Tampa Bay. The other one was against Nashville. So it's really weird because Nashville's offense is struggling big time where Tampa Bay obviously is a very deep team that is going to score a bunch of goals. So it is weird that those are the two teams that he gave up that. It's kind of like a Jekyll and Hyde type thing. I'm not defending his play overall. I know that his play hasn't been great and he's getting paid a lot of money to really not be an asset to the team. But overall, you know, maybe if they could just work on that, that'd be great. And then if they could just keep it up, I don't know if they'll be a great defensive team for the remainder of the year, but if they could just be above average, that'd be huge. Overall, the Panthers are a big surprise. Do I think it'll continue? Yes. But here's what's going to have to happen. They're going to have to continue to have Drieger play well, have Bob at least be, you know, barely above or barely average, something like that at the very worst. They're going to need to make sure that the offense scores a ton of goals, and for their sake, probably the power play draw more penalties in order to still be able to provide that high amount of goals, that top 10 goal scoring production. And the defense is going to have to continue to be stout in order for this team to play well. Then, yes, the Florida Panthers are the real deal for the season and will make the playoffs. Will that happen? I don't know, but I will say one thing that really, really helps them is this is a shortened season. Hot starts can help you big time. You know, Buffalo would probably be a great example of this where in the past few years they've had two really hot starts for the year and then they taper off. Now you have, I think, 26 less games. You have 56 games this season compared to 82 games in a regular season. So you're going to be able to go on a hot start and it not affect you as much if you go and maybe just go a little bit average. So yes, I think that they can make the playoffs if these things continue to happen. Will it continue to happen? I don't know. But we're going to see, and then we'll probably cover them a little bit later in the season, say another 20 games, and talk about where they are if this continues. That's going to wrap it up for today's video. Everybody, thank you so much. Have a great day. Please make sure to subscribe if you haven't. Also, make sure to like, and uh, stay safe from COVID, all right? Goodbye, Brigadiers and Brigadettes, and hockey fans in general. This is your captain signing off. Have a great week.